Hey guys, today we have a battery here from Power Eurus to take a look at. This is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Power Eurus is owned by the same company that owns RoyPow. I guess RoyPow is their higher end brand and this is kind of like their mid range brand. In fact, they told me these are made in the same factory as RoyPow batteries. So I'm kind of wondering if we'll see some similar components inside. This will be our usual video overview of features. We'll do a capacity test and then we'll take it apart and see what's inside. Okay, so this is built in a very similar plastic case as many of the other batteries we have seen. This case measures 13 inches in width, 6.8 inches in depth, and 8.4 inches in height. This battery is rated for a continuous charge of 50 amps and a continuous discharge of 100 amps with the max discharge of 280 amps for 5 seconds. On the top of the battery we have a nylon carry strap, we have an overpressure relief valve, and then we have our standard epoxy terminals. However, I did notice that the bolts that come with this battery are quite a bit short in length. You can only fit about one battery lug on this bolt. And here's an example of a bolt that comes from another battery. You can see how short this one is. So while this case looks like many of the other batteries we've taken a look at, there are two things that make it unique. First of all, it's got this pressure vent. We have not seen pressure vents on many other batteries. In fact, the only other battery that comes to mind that had a pressure vent was the Epoch battery we just reviewed a few days ago. Additionally, this nylon strap goes the whole way around the battery and is supported underneath. Most of these cases we've looked at, the nylon strap stops at these two plastic pieces here. I haven't heard anybody saying that the strap or the plastic breaks, but uh, I have to wonder why else they would have put the strap the entire way around the battery. This does come with a small booklet manual that's laid out in a number of languages. A few points to take note of. Uh, number 11, charge protection temperature at 0 degrees Celsius, so this should have low temperature charging protection. And these batteries support a maximum of 4 in series, and they recommend a maximum of 2 in parallel. Everything else in here is fairly standard. It does include a 24 month or 2 year warranty. This battery has finished charging. As usual, I use my Ames 12 volt, I think it's about like 75 amps charger. Um, so we can go ahead and disconnect this. And just the usual capacity test setup, in case you're not familiar with that, I'm using a Batrium BMS shunt, and that is transmitting data over here where we can see voltage, amperage, wattage, discharge amp hours, and discharge watt hours. Going to use this 2000 watt inverter with a series of incandescent light bulbs to try to get approximately a 0.2 to 0.25 C discharge rate. And you can see we're right around 300 watts, so we'll be back when this finishes. All right, our capacity test is finished here. The BMS in the battery has shut it down with low voltage disconnect. And you can see our final capacity is 102.2 amp hours. All right, that took a lot of work to get open. They have this rubber stuff the entire way around. I don't think it's silicone. It's just some type of very rubbery substance. And I actually had to peel back the lip of the lid the entire way around this battery to get it off. But as expected, the internals do look like Roy Pau type components. And it actually looks like a very similarly banded battery as the uh, Epoch batteries here. They're a bit longer and more narrow though. We've got the same rubber covers and the same temperature sensors on both posts, both on the negative and over here on the positive, we have temperature sensors. Taking a look at the wiring, it's all nicely wrapped here and it appears to be a pair of number 8 gauge silicone insulated wires. So the BMS is down in here, but I noticed there's also a small board mounted to the side of the styrofoam and I believe this is the Bluetooth module. Oh man guys, they have the entire thing potted in some rubber down there, but it does appear to be moving here. So it's this big piece of foam on the side that's really got it hung up here. Alright, there we go. Look at all this rubber stuff that's enclosing the entire battery. Holy cow! <laughs> that's pretty thick and pretty heavy. I'm kind of surprised they call this their mid-range brand. This is really good. So we see they have these aluminum plates on both ends of the battery and they've got two steel straps holding the battery in place, fixing the cells together. Helps prevent them from expanding here. So they have these uh, metal brackets here actually riveted to those aluminum plates and that's holding the BMS in place. And like I expected, this is a Roy Pau brand BMS. So they are using Roy Pau branded components in here. So connections on the top is we have our balance lead. We've got a block of temperature sensors here. We've got our main negative connects behind here. We've got our positive power conductor. Uh, so that BMS is just held in by a series of serrated flange nuts. 
So on the back here you can see the main battery connector and the main power connector B minus P minus and we can see on the label this is a 120 amp BMS but again there with the conformal coating you can kind of see it shining in the light just to prevent corrosion and whatnot on this uh, PCB. Additionally we can see there is a temperature sensor fixed right here it's labeled MOS NTC and I see there's also a temperature sensor down under the heat sink. So those are the two missing temperature sensors that we didn't locate on the other battery. So looking at the top of our battery here, they do have some of this rubber stuff covering the terminals and it actually looks like it's covering the vents. I'm kind of surprised at that. Oh, okay, my mistake. It's not covering the vents. That must be a QR code or something. Let's see what's under there. But either way, we can see that these are laser welded terminals. The laser welds do look pretty nice. And here are the two temperature sensors. We have T1 and T2. And these are sitting directly on the main positive and the main negative post. That's a great sign. So they have these little brackets here laser welded to the top of the cell. And this is how they transitioned from uh, the aluminum laser weld to the cable that runs to the BMS. They have a nice sized, looks like about an M8 or an M M6. Might be an M6 screw here. Uh, the balance leads are all individually labeled. We see B0, B1, B2, B3, and B4. I'd like to see if we can get a QR code. I'm not sure if that's what's under these little round things or not here. All right, so there is a QR code under there. Here it is if you're interested. The QR code doesn't make it immediately known whether these are 100 or 105 amp hour cells, uh, but I assume we can probably look that up and find out online. As far as I can tell by our typical definition, they do appear to be grade A cells. I don't see any bloating. I don't see any damage. They're not like deformed or anything. The QR codes are intact. The vents look good. Uh, so I know there's some controversy as to what is and is not a grade A cell, but they look pretty good from my perspective, so I can say that much. I did notice too that there does appear to be rubber or some sort of, I don't know if it's like that insulative battery fish paper stuff between them. Uh, so they are spaced out a little bit, which is good. The bottom looks good as well. Nice and flat. Not too much to see there. It looks as we would expect. All right, so now we're going to test the low temperature charging protection. My eye charger is set at 1.5 amps here. I peeled back the sensor a little bit and we're just going to hit it with some of the freeze spray. It's a lot easier than using water. And there we go, it's shut down. It says output connection broken. And we've resumed charging again at 1.5 amps. Uh, so next I want to hit the same sensor with the heat gun and make sure it shuts down for high temperature protection. And there we go. Once again, output connection broken. The high temperature protection does work. All right. Once again, we are charging. Last test is we're going to uh, test the over temperature protection of one of the terminal post stud sensors. All right. There we go. Output connection broken once again. So we know the high temp protection of the sensor on the terminal studs work. Taking a look at the Bluetooth app, it looks near identical to the Epoch batteries app. Uh, which makes sense since Roy Powell manufactured that battery as well. We have the same information, the voltage, amperage, uh, design capacity is 100 amp hours, and you can see the actual capacity is 101 amp hours, which again matches what we tested with our discharge test. We see a uh, report for the four of six temperature sensors. Again, you cannot check the two on the terminal studs in the app, but we did note that they do work. Additionally, we see the voltage of each individual cell there. So there we go, the 12 volt, 100 amp hour power Urus lithium iron phosphate battery. Absolutely nothing negative to say about it. All of our tests passed. We passed the capacity test. The high and low temperature disconnect both work. Uh, the build quality looks very, very well done. Uh, I expect nothing less from a Roy Pow battery at this point. Uh, these batteries sell for $420 on Amazon. I'll leave a link down in the video description if you are interested. Uh, if you choose to purchase one, make sure you tick the little box. There's like a $30 coupon. I think you have to check to get the $420 price. Any questions or comments, you can leave those. Please hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.